Hi, I'm Dr. Andrea Slominski, and this is my presentation for the Mythologium 2023, entitled Myth Illuminates the Heart of Humanity, and it is Eternally, Blessedly Feminine. So, okay, it's dangerous to talk about masculine and feminine these days. In broader culture, the terms masculine and feminine are forged to the ideas of gender. However, in my discussion of myth and the heart today, I'm referencing the archetypal feminine in terms of its foundation within the hearts of all humanity. As a mythologist, I dream that humankind will heal the division of self and other. As Marian Woodman offers, quote, a new balance must be found if we are to proceed wholly into our future evolutionary growth. And yet, the world is divided. We live in a dualistic cosmos, matter, antimatter, stellar birth, the black hole, creation, destruction, light, dark, death, life, black, white, us, them, and in many of the species on our planet, male and female. Anthropologists, archaeologists, mythologists, psychologists, historians, and scholars have written thousands of pages and hundreds of books and given a multitude of lectures, all related to humankind's attempt to understand the cosmos, our world, and our place in it through our mythologies. From all of these brilliant thinkers and their research, we've come to know as human consciousness developed, so did the mythologies that helped us understand the world we live in, our place in it, and our cultural traditions and ideas. One of the earliest of these mythological ideas is the concept of the cosmos as the great mother. This mythic idea is also a foundational archetype of the feminine. The great mother was understood to be the entire cosmos and the universe was her womb through which all life and matter were created. In the dream of the cosmos, Anne Baring writes, quote, this image of the primordial mother emerged at different times in different cultures and endured for different lengths of time and was worshiped with different rituals. But it is possible to say that the great mother was the primary experience of spirit, just as the mother is the primary experience of life for the infant and small child. In Eric Neumann's classic text, The Great Mother, an analysis of the archetype, he explains that a multiplicity of images and attributes of the great mother surround the archetypal figure, and that it's actually made up of a great number of figures. He writes, quote, goddesses, fairies, female demons, and nymphs, friendly and unfriendly, together manifest the one great unknown, the great mother, as the central aspect of the archetypal feminine in the rites and myths and religions and legends of mankind, close quote. He continues, before that, the great mother, who in truth encompasses almost everything, heaven, water, and earth, even fire is her son, it becomes evident that the feminine cannot be identified with the lower earthly principle as the later patriarchal world and its religions and philosophies would have it. The totality of the archetypal feminine goes far beyond the projection in which she unites the elements of earth, water, air, and fire. The feminine is also the goddess of time and thus of faith. Close quote. Our first and most powerful interaction with the archetypal feminine is the relationship with our birth mother, whether she be the good mother, the too good mother, the terrible mother, or some other archie styled mother. This is our first embodied encounter with the archetype of mother, a personalized aspect of the great mother, and perhaps the most influential relationship in the development of the rest of our lives. The relationship with our mother as an infant is our first narrative. It's our first story. It's our first fundamental experience of love, being loved and giving love. Or it may be the first story of needs unmet from the beginning. No matter what kind of mother, it's the beginning of relationship and communication. We have a need, we cry. We are hungry and we're fed. We're uncomfortable, we cry and we're changed. We're lonely, we're cold, we're fearful, we're held, we're caressed, and we're loved. This is the first relationship from which a sense of individual identity begins, the separation of one into two, and the discernment of our individuality and our separateness. 
In the human experience of the nurturing archetypal feminine, we feel the presence of love and we respond to it through the heart. The human qualities of the archetypal feminine include loving, nurturing, caretaking, compassion, empathy, collaboration, intuition, being reflective, creative, responsive, and in tune with the cycles of nature and our bodies. The feminine is associated with yin energy and embodies the qualities of flow and receptivity. Buddhism teaches cultivating the boundless heart. The qualities of this heart are immeasurable kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. The seeds of these qualities lie in each of our hearts as we cultivate them into the awakened heart. They allow us to experience the deepest emotional and psychological freedom. The cultivation of the boundless heart encourages us to open our eyes and to be able to embrace the difficulties, joys of life with grace, understanding, and compassion. Knowing that our story is part of the universal story. The qualities of the archetypal feminine or the conscious feminine, as Marian Woodman calls it, reside within the heart. For Woodman, conscious femininity is an awareness of connectivity between all things, the harmony in nature, and the acknowledgement of a world soul. She writes, quote, the word feminine has very little to do with gender, nor are women the sole custodians of femininity. The feminine is presence and relatedness and a heart that can open so that when you meet another person, you're actually seeing that person's authentic self. The great work of our time is to bring the feminine into this culture, close quote. It is the loss of our soul connection to the natural world, to our inner feminine relational capacity and to one another that Woodman argues is responsible for much of the suffering and chaos in society. Whether it is named the archetypal feminine, the feminine spirit, the perennial feminine, the conscious feminine, the remythologizing of the female life cycle, or the heroine's journey, the call for the restoration of the feminine is the call to human wholeness through the heart. In his book, A Blue Fire, James Hillman tells a story I want to share with you here. He recalls being at a famous institute in Zurich, where he says, quote, the words schizophrenia and complex were born here. He continues, I watched a woman being interviewed. She sat in a wheelchair because she was elderly and feeble. She said that she was dead for she had lost her heart. The psychiatrist asked her to place her hand over her breast to feel her heart beating. It must still be there if you can feel its beat. That, she said, is not my real heart. She and the psychiatrist looked at each other. There was nothing more to say. Like the primitive who has lost his soul, she had lost the loving, courageous connection to life. And that is the real heart. Hillman goes on in the text to discuss personifying and polytheistic psychology as a route to opening the heart. He says they offer another avenue to loving. Quote, imagining things in a personal form so that we can find access to them within our hearts is the very recognition that personifying emotionalizes, shifts the discussion from nominalism to imagination, from head to heart, close quote. In our quest for meaning, purpose, and belonging, we find access to an understanding of the deepest levels of human experience through the heart and its innate feminine archetypal energies. The pathways of the heart are illuminated by the lantern of myth. I'm holding the lantern of myth. Can you see it? Within myth are all of the experiences glorious and devastating of the human condition. The goddesses, gods, and characters of the myths personify the experience of living a human life, striving for connection, acceptance, understanding, love, community, and wholeness. Myth illuminates the heart of humanity. The heart is the noble seat of love, compassion, empathy, intuition, creativity, feeling, relationship, and nurturance. These are the attributes of the archetypal feminine. The heart is held, nurtured, opened, protected, led, expanded, and emboldened by the eternal sacred feminine. 
all of us have been born through an embodiment of the feminine, our mother. It's a bond of the heart. In the best of circumstances, it's the good mother who orchestrates the initiation of our hearts. Whether through care or neglect, it's the feminine that begins that journey. We craft our narrative, a sense of self and relationship first with our hearts. As life progresses, we can turn to myth to understand our expanding narratives and be reconciled to our hearts. These metaphoric tales invite us to embrace life, life's highs and lows. They light the path through the heavens and the underworld, revealing the power of the feminine within the full and empty heart. Myths call us to compassion and empathy for ourselves, for each other, and the world. Myths invite us to embrace and support each other as we go through our personal experiences of life's universal rites of passage. Looking at the range of human experience that myths offer, we find insights and maps to navigation of the some of the trickiest of some of the trickiest issues, some of the toughest transformations and challenges of human life. It's through the heart that we access our feeling function and our emotions, and the heart is linked to the intuitive function through the body and the gut. I want to share two examples with you from my practice of myths that open women's hearts for healing, expand their perspectives on life, and offer inclusion for their chapter in the universal human story. The Homeric Hymn to Demeter holds a skeleton key to the multifaceted relationship between mothers and daughters. More than one of my clients has suffered through what is commonly called empty nest. The pain and suffering that many women feel can be debilitating when their child leaves for college or moves out of the family home to begin their own life. The mythic narrative in the hymn includes the experiences of separation, loss, desperation, fear, anxiety, anticipation, maturation, sexual awakening, desolation, abandonment, and the perceived loss of meaning, purpose, and belonging, as well as the desire for autonomy, individuality, self-fulfillment, new meaning, and the search for understanding, support, and reconciliation. This experience of separation from the child is suffered through the heart. It's an instinctive bond forged in the refiner's fire of creation, blood, and birth. When Demeter and Persephone are separated, there is no bond that can be fixed. There's no going back. It has to be transformed. It has to be recreated, reforged anew in both souls. This process of separation and movement towards individuation happens on both sides of the equation. The mother has to recreate herself and her life just as the child is discovering theirs. Within the narrative, women find commiseration, identification, compassion, empathy, and most importantly, an understanding that no mother is alone in this experience. Demeter's trials and tribulations are a map of women's fury, pain, sadness, desperation, failures, weaknesses, and abject desolation. The myth offers maps and clues for women to rediscover reweave, and create their path forward to healing. This myth illuminates the depth and the height within the hearts of mothers and daughters. The other mythic example that I want to share today is the story of Ariadne and Theseus. Ariadne's narrative gives liberating expression to women who discover that they gave their all to someone or something and were abandoned, disrespected, or unappreciated. Whether it occurred in a personal relationship, career project, or with family and friends, women who have experienced this relate deeply to the heart of this myth. The tale illustrates how women can apply Ariadne's experience to their lives, empowering them to rise victorious from difficult and painful events. Ariadne's name comes from the ancient Minoan Crete, Ari, most, Adnos, holy. In the early mythology of Crete, she was considered to be mistress of the labyrinth, one of the great mother goddesses and keeper of secrets and sacred ways. She was the pathway to the deepest levels of soul experience. Walking to the center of the labyrinth was the search for the wheel of life. 
The center point is the great mystery of being and becoming, of life and death. The labyrinth, as the metaphor for the journey of life, illustrates the twists and turns, the possibilities and the difficulties that we each face on the paths we walk. Some women find rich parallels to the twists and turns of their lives in this myth. They include infatuation, falling in love, the devotion of one's whole creativity, ingenuity, and energy to a person or project, the giving of the thread of one's life to who or whatever you are passionate about, turning one's back on the known world for the imaginal dream of a new one, running from distortion and dysfunction blindly towards whatever looks better, the crushing of one's hopes and dreams, betrayal, confusion, being taken advantage of, being used and manipulated, or having your creativity, instincts, and talents disused or dishonored. Women who are experiencing the trials of Ariadne can find hope and healing upon emergence from the labyrinth. For my clients who experience these twists and turns of Ariadne's story in their personal lives, in their work, or their creative lives, the myth offers keys to the release of rage, anger, desperation, hopelessness, grief, worthlessness, confusion, and despair. These mythic life experiences exemplified in Ariadne's narrative are betrayals of women's sacred creative energies. They are a direct assault on the heart. The giving of oneself wholly to a person or an endeavor requires a level of vulnerability and intimacy that when disregarded, deeply wounds the heart. Abandonment is its own tragic realm of the underworld. It's a vacuum devoid of light and air and hope. It's a dry drowning while gasping for breath. This entire dark night of the soul is filled with unrelenting questions, shame, and torments for which there are no answers. Ultimately, at the death of the dream, standing dead center in the depth of the labyrinth, it's the life force of Dionysus that reflects off the shattered shards of the soul, revealing the potential for rebirth and renewal. It's at this moment during the darkening of the wounded heart, slipping further into unconsciousness, that the god Dionysus enters the myth and rescues Ariadne. Now, archetypally, she's not rescued in the way that a knight rescues a damsel in distress. Rather, her psyche is called back to consciousness by the welling up of Dionysian energy. This is the energy of the feminine presenting, feminine loving god. The god of passion, ecstasy, and monadic celebration has come to jumpstart her broken heart with the rhythm of life. The energies that Ar Ariadne needs to wake up and reclaim her life are carried to her from her unconscious by Dionysus. As an animus figure, he is, as Clarissa Pinkola Estes writes, quote, the one who travels the road between the two territories and sometimes three the underworld, the inner world, and the outer world, close quote. The healing of the Ariadne-like heart begins when the inner maenad is finally released and the heart is free to feel whatever it feels, including its vulnerability and pain. Dionysus calls Ariadne back from desolation to self-love, self-compassion, self-empathy, and rekindles intuition, creativity, relationship, and self-nurturance. Dionysus is the personification of the vital energy that fuels a passion for life. He's the archetypal rhythm whose echoes we feel in the rhythm of our hearts. This myth offers maps, mile markers, and a path forward for women who are searching for a way to reclaim their self-image and sense of purpose, meaning, and belonging after abandonment disrespect, and disillusionment. These two mythological examples barely scrape the surface of the relationship between myth and the heart. Betrayal and abandonment, separation and grief, rebirth and growth, renewal and recreation are only a few of the archetypal human experiences we encounter living our lives. 
The way of logos may explain what happened. However, it's the path of mythos that leads us forward through the realms of the heart to healing. Myth shows us that we are not alone in our experiences. It builds bridges through the heart from one human life to another, from one species to another, connecting the entire cosmic ecosystem of life and consciousness through the archetypal feminine. And so now we find ourselves back at the beginning, the connected cosmos as the great mother, the eternal archetypal conscious feminine. Myth illuminates the heart of humanity, and that heart is eternally, blessedly feminine. Thank you.